everybody! Hi, Rutger! How are you doing? All so, right. we are collaborating again on a Game of Thrones and science video. Ooh, we want to talk about some of the science yeah. behind these northern folks that are coming in down now in season 8. You are an evolutionary biologist. Yes. Um, at uh, Naturalis Biodiversity Center in the Netherlands. Oh, in Netherlands, in Leiden, where we are now. Yes. How did I get here so quickly from shooting the videos uh, back home during the season? It's the magic of Tinseltown. It's incredible. It's incredible. It's incredible. It's incredible. Yeah. So we're gonna try to make scientific sense of what's going on in the north and we're gonna use that for a bold prediction for the conclusion, conclusion of the story. What kind of science could you apply to what's going on in the north? In Scotland. Yes, yes. they're coming down. Yeah, yeah. You can see that a lot of the things that are coming down from the north are kind of big, aren't they? The giants. There's the giants. There's mammoths. Mammoths. Big bears also. Big bears. Uh, the wolves are enormous. Right. The spiders are bigger. Yeah, so the spiders, it's a, that's a separate issue. We'll get to that. Okay. Uh. So let's <laughs> talk about the mammals first. That actually, in, in building this world, that actually kind of fits with our own world in that animals, warm-blooded animals in cold climates are bigger. In yeah. our world? Yes. So For example, wolves? Bears, like in the show? Be uh, bears, for sure. Giants? Right. Well, giants, I guess, don't exist. Okay, but... But they're a general, they conform to a general rule. The, the problem that the species are trying to solve is, how do I not lose so much heat? So it's not to Because die, it's cold, and, cold. And, yeah. and they're warm-blooded animals, it costs a lot of energy uh, to maintain heat. To find warmth. food. Yeah, and okay. so they want to be conservative with that. Okay. And the trick is as follows. So the uh, heat, of course, dissipates, disappears yeah. through the skin. Okay. So you want to have relatively little skin surface relative to your volume as an organism. Okay, and you do that by magic? Well, that's one way, but so uh, the way in which, uh, uh, for example, polar bears do it compared to much smaller tropical bears okay. uh, is to grow larger because the surface area increases at a different rate than the volume. Like imagine a, a cube, like a dice, and it's like okay. a, a, a one by one by one centimeter. So the surface is six square centimeters, right. and volume is one centimeter cubed. So the, the ratio yeah. is one okay. to six. Because you one uh, multiplied by one by one. Yes. Still one. Yes. Okay. Right, exactly. So six to one. Yeah, six to one. Okay. I'm now imagine there. if it gets, if it becomes two by two by two centimeters. Okay. Okay, so the volume is two times two times two. Okay. Right, is eight. Okay. Yeah, I knew that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but the surface area is, uh, okay, so it's uh, two by two is four s square centimeters one side, four times side, six right. is 24. So now the ratio is not one to six, but you know, eight to 24 is one to three. So, the, or so, so the surface area uh, has become smaller relative to the volume. And we're just telling like out. By just growing bigger. And, and now imagine. But just a little bit. And that's just like a little bit. But now imagine going to So the, the ratio side. would change, the, the, the mass would be larger than the surface. Yes. So basically, the larger you are, the more heat you have inside, and the less places you have the heat to come out of. Exactly. Okay, so. What it means is in our world and in this world that evolutionary wise, the animals that were larger could retain more heat, could do more stuff, could be more successful. Right. Huh. Yeah. So do you think he knew that when he created all these uh, big northern animals? We don't see giant animals uh, in other places. I, I guess he kind of knew that, but in that world, there's you know, also things that don't really make sense, obviously. Ah, you said about the spiders. So for example, the spiders. Right? Spiders are not warm blooded. They don't need to retain heat. They, need, they don't need to retain heat. So they're, they're not under that kind of constraints, like, oh, we have to grow bigger in the uh, Arctic. And actually in the jungle, the tropics, they're bigger now. Right. Okay. So that Boom, plot hole, out. giant spiders. So this principle of uh, growing larger at higher latitudes, so mm -hmm. further away from the equator in colder okay. climates, actually has a, has a name. It's mm -hmm. called Bergman's Rule. So after Berg who? Uh, after Bergman. Oh. 
Yeah. Yeah. Should have known that. Yeah. Should have guessed it. So Arctic animals are generally large. And 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 humans. Are humans generally larger when when you go up north? Aren't they though? They kind of so are. we are here in Holland. Boom. And we're we're already gigantic. So you are the tallest people on the planet. Yeah. Average 184. Okay, so the Greeks would be smaller. The Greeks would be smaller. The Greeks are smaller. <laughs> yeah. That's racist. <laughs> yeah, sorry. <laughs> but uh, as a general rule, it kind of holds up right. also in human populations. Right, just because like we can travel more, so we can pl like uh, with planes and stuff, we, whatever. Well, there's, there's there, I mean, there's other dynamics as well. Right, of right, course, right. Uh, food and uh, maybe yeah, other constraints like the so the the people in East Africa they are very tall, but also <laughs> quite lanky, ah, I guess. They're not like burly or... or no, or so, so there's okay. something there also actually with losing heat. Ah. So ah, right. Obviously it's not just one thing that shapes okay. it, but, as, but it's one of the rules that we see actually in a lot of ah. warm-blooded animals and, and, and probably also in humans. I would like to talk about it, but I feel that it's just all going to be very racist. Yes. It's all going to be very racist. So <laughs> do you have any <laughs> other scientific uh, theory that is not racist that refers to the north and to these northern fellows coming on down <laughs> with the winter illegal immigration. That's the caravan Once that uh, crossed the wall. The wall. Yeah. 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 Because it was a see-through wall. It just like yeah. walk through it. The caravan, everybody told us the caravan was coming. Okay, so let's use all this science and try to get a bold prediction about what could happen by the end of the story. What is about to happen is sort of like an ice age coming and with these Arctic animals expanding their ranges mm. temporarily. Just like, for example, happens during our ice ages, but when winter ends, if it winter ends, okay. then of course these animals which are adapted to the cold climate and have their own strategies for coping with that, they again will be outcompeted by right. the ones that are more adapted to the coming spring, right? And they will move back north, right? Or because extinct because, because they will need to lose heat when it's very hot, right? Uh, so yeah. they will go back, okay? They might go back, they might go die. out. So yeah. even there, if there will be giants and all kinds of big animals by the before the end of the story, once winter goes away, they go away, they go away. Okay, so let's wrap it up. Utrecht, it's been a blast, as yeah. always. Thank you, patrons, for supporting the channel. You can go to patreon.com slash Academy, and your support is uh, very much appreciated to the sustainability of this channel, not just for this season. Also, after the season, the prequel and all kinds of stuff, movies, shows, whatever. Hope to see you there, patreon.com slash Academy. Bye, everybody! <laughs> But I was raised up on the other